Come on, go before the Lord as we walk into this lunch hour. And go before the Lord and tell him the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His steadfast love never ceases. His mercies are new unto us every day, every morning, every afternoon, every aspect of our lives. His steadfast love never ceases. His mercies are new every morning, O Lord. Just go before him and worship him and glorify him this afternoon. For he alone is God and he is worthy of our praise. He alone is God and he is worthy of all glory and of all honor. Who, where would we be if it had not been for him leading us and walking with us and being by our side? He causes us to come. He causes us to seek him. He causes us to fellowship with him. Jesus, who are you? without the Lord. Jesus, we put our trust, our confidence, our hope in you, O oh Lord. This afternoon, we just say thank you. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for life. Thank you for being a friend. Yeah, as, as we go through different storms and different shakings of life, thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. Come on, somebody. Continue to just worship worship and meditate on the Lord. You know, in your own words, I do not know how you're feeling this afternoon. I do not know how you, you, you came to this place. But this every time in the house of the Lord, every time in the presence of the Lord is an opportunity for fellowship. It's an opportunity for you to talk to him. Yes, talk to him. Even as he prepares to speak to you, just talk to him in your own words. May there be a refreshing he said, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit, that will guide you, that will comfort you, that will see you in all situations, that will see you, that even, even that will celebrate with you when things do not seem to be going well. So just go before him and celebrate him and say, Lord, thank you. Where you feel like uh, you can sense the helper, you know, helping you, where you, where you can sense that love, that love, you know, being poured out upon you, Lord. Just thank him, Lord. Life without you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We pray that even as we, 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 we gather and, 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 and we share from the scriptures, Lord, we pray that above everything else, that you will increase in us, that you will minister to us, O oh Lord, that you will renew our hearts and our minds in you, O oh God. In you, O oh God. You said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. And as we constantly dwell on your word, O oh God, may you speak unto us, O oh Lord. May you refine us, O oh God. May you remind us of your goodness, of your love, of your mercy, of your ever-present help in times of trouble, in times of need. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to our lunch hour. Um, I'm sorry I got the traffic was not good. Always want to be early and enjoy some time of prayer. But I'm glad that we are here. And we are here to have fellowship with the Lord. Those that are following us online, we also welcome. I pray that the Lord will use this time to minister to you as you tap into the time of prayer that we have as a cathedral uh, throughout the day, throughout the week. Yeah, we, we are always praying Monday to Monday. This lunch hour, my name is Frobisha. Um, I am a teacher by profession. And um, we are still on holiday, so um, I'm able to be around. So we are going to be sharing briefly from the topic that I was given, uh, which is breaking friendship with the world. Breaking friendship with the world. And um, this, this, this sh our sharing is being taken from the book of James, uh, James chapter 4. And uh, the focus is on verse 4. But I will bring it up from the beginning. But let me first read the, 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 the theme verse properly, and then I bring it up um, as the Spirit of the Lord guides us. 
So in verse 4, he says, you adulterous people, don't you know, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Is the question that they're asking this afternoon. Friendship with the world. And if you're in that situation, or if you can identify with any of the few things that are going to be mentioned uh, this afternoon, then you will fall in the category of, of people that may need to deal with that aspect of the world. And you need to break yourself from that from that portion. And I will conclude with that aspect of how to break through. But I was asking myself, what is friendship with the world? Many times we, we can struggle with that. Yeah? You're dealing with, 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 with worldly things and you're wondering, but are these really worldly? Or um, what's the difference between the things that I'm doing and what, what makes something godly, what makes things something ungodly? And that's the question that you'll ask yourself because sometimes um, we can tend to think that only sinful acts uh, tend to be worldly or tend to be ungodly. But many times uh, it can stretch even beyond that. And at the end of the day, we are on both sides. We want to be in a relationship with God, but again, we want to be enjoying the things of this world. And he's saying it cannot it cannot happen. He's saying, friendship with the world is hatred towards God. Anyone who chooses to become a friend of the world will become an enemy of God by aut automatic. You cannot choose both. Yeah, so automatically making one choice determines the other choice that you have already made. So we need to think on those. And to understand a bit about friendship with the world... There are three categories of things that came to my mind. And um, we can go back to verse 1 and try to pick up uh, a few things by looking at the signs um, that are being mentioned. Uh, from verse 1, it says, What causes fights and quarrels amongst you? What causes quarrels and fights amongst you? And in my mind, I was thinking that that question makes sense to me in light with friendship with the world. If I am reflecting this afternoon, that's one of the questions I ask myself. What are the things that are causing quarrels and fights amongst my family, me and my family members, me and my relatives? What are the things that are causing fights and quarrels at my workplace? What are the things that are causing fights and quarrels in my family or, or in my marriage or in my relationship or in my business with my business partner? And he continues to say, don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Don't they come from the, your desires that battle within you? One aspect of friendship with the world comes with our desires that are within us. Now, our desires that are within us are not necessarily bad. But there is a distinction here. The desires that you have that are causing quarrels and fights are the ones that we need to focus on this afternoon. What are those? What are those desires that are causing fights and quarrels amongst you? from whatever point of reflection that the Spirit of God is bringing it to your understanding, ask yourself that question. Not all desires are bad. Not all desires lead to fights. Not all desires lead to quarrels. But there are those that you need to think about. What desires are those that lead to quarrels and to fights amongst us? That's the first thing. I will come back to that. But I noticed that. The second one is, you want something... Uh, in verse 2, he says, you want something, but you do not get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and you fight. You do not have 
because you do not ask God. And then when you ask, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. That is the second point I noted. The first one was my desires. The second one is my pleasures. The pleasures. And it also says it leads to quarrels and fights. But there's also another aspect it brings about. So what are the pleasures of life that consume me? What are the pleasures? Those are the ones that are tending me towards friendship with the world. Friendship with the world. One, desires. Two, pleasures. And finally, that the third one that got to my attention was pride. If you go on to read down, um, I think it is verse... Uh, verse 5, what do you think that the scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us is in us envies intensely? Verse 6, but he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So those are three aspects this afternoon that I want us to focus on that cause us to Trend, I don't know, is it trend, trend along the paths of worldly living? The pride within us. The pride within us. The pleasures that we seek, that we desire. Then also our, our, our selfish desires, our, our desires that do not glorify God, cause us to be on the other side of life. And it comes out clearly in this portion of Scripture. And I was going to think about, so what does this lead to us? What does this cause in our lives? Friendship with the world in these aspects, in your desires, in your pleasures, in your pride, can lead to three things that I'm going to point out that, that stood out for me. And if you see that evident in your life, then, then, then that's a checkpoint for you to say, God, is, what, show me what do I need to deal with? What, how have I began to be an adulterous person, being on both sides, on God's side and also on the worldly side. And the first thing that was, was popular that we, I already mentioned is friendship with the world causes us to have fights and quarrels amongst us. That's the first thing that is the first sign that you will see as an indicator. And not just in James chapter 4 do you see it, but also in Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. There is also an emphasis there of what? Of that aspect. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. I can read there and it says, At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. What causes quarrels and fights? Pleasures, all kinds of passions and pleasures. You can see it there. What did it cause? It caused envy, malice, hatred, and hate amongst us. So what are those pleasures that seem to be consuming you? What are those pleasures that you need to bring before the Lord? What are those passions that you need to deal with this afternoon? May the Lord convict us about those things that we need to deal with. Let me continue to also say um, what causes, another thing that, that, that causes fights and quarrels amongst us um, as uh, pride. If you see in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 10, pride is also reflected there as an aspect Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, you will see there that they're mentioning. Um, pride only breeds quarrels. Pride only breeds quarrels. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Pride only breeds quarrels. What causes quarrels and fights amongst you? 
Is it pride? Is it your pleasures and, kind and, 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 and passions? Is it your selfish desires? You need to see that those things are addressed. Otherwise, you will be on the other line of trading with the world. The second thing that I noticed that friendship with the world can cause to us as believers is lack amongst us. Lack amongst us. If we go back to James chapter 4 and, verse, and that portion of scripture that I've been reading, it says, what causes, what causes what? That was the first thing. The second thing it says, you want something, yeah, that's verse 2, right? You want something, but you do not get it. Of course, it continues to say you quarrel and fight. Then it says, you do not have because you do not ask God. So you are busy on another path. You want something, but you do not have. Why? Because you are friends with the world. Lack amongst us. Why don't we have? Is a question. Then he says, even when you ask God, why don't you receive? Why? Friendship with the world. He says, because of your pleasures, because of your wrong motives, because of your selfishness, you do not receive. First, we lack. Two, even when we ask, we do not receive because of friendship with the world. Because of our pleasures that consume us, that we, we pursue, that we want to accomplish. God is saying, Examine your heart this afternoon. Are you those pleasures that you desire, are those passions that are burning on the inside of you, are they causing that difference? Are they causing that separation? Are they causing the gap between you and God? And if there is no relationship with God, then how do you expect to receive from him? You will continue to live and to struggle with lack. And it stands out clearly in those scriptures. You know, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend it on what you want. Then the final one is friendship with the world chokes the word of God in our lives. I will draw attention to both scriptures. There's Mark chapter 4 that I found interesting. I don't want to lose this. Let me just keep it here. Mark chapter 4 and verse 7, 19. Mark chapter 4 and verse 19. I'm going to read both accounts because they make sense. They emphasize the same point, but in a different way. This is the parable of the sower. But in Mark chapter 4, he brings it in, a, in one way. And then also in Luke chapter 8, he brings it in a similar way, but to bring out the point even better. I don't know why they use different illustrations, but the Spirit of God... Um, uses his word in that way to bless us. So in Mark chapter 4 and verse 19, you will notice how he phrases it. He says, um, verse 19, uh -huh, he says, let me begin from verse 18. Still others, like seed sown among the thorns, hear the word. Seed sowed among the thorns, hear the word. Mm -hmm. Then what does it continue to say? But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and what? And the desires for other things. Mm -hmm. And he's clarifying that not all desires are bad, but the desires for other things that are not godly. The desires for other things, they come in and chalk the word of God that has been rooted in the side of us, making it unfruitful. Friends, it is dangerous. Friendship with the world with the world will cause us to have a life that is unfruitful. Where are God's presence in us? Um, God's presence in us, God's uh, uh, life in us 
is not manifesting in the way it ought to. I don't know how else you will understand fruitfulness, but he says that our desires, the, 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 the pursuit of pleasures, the pursuit of wealth, causes us to become, to causes the word of God to become unfruitful in our lives. And I was thinking on this, and you know, many people tend to mistake this. I'll come back to it when I, when, when I go to detail. Let's just run quickly to Luke 8, chapter 14. Same exact thing, but now a different angle to it. Friendship with the world causes us to be unfruitful Christians. We are feeding on the word. You have come for a lunch hour, but those things constantly choke us. Constantly choke us. And that's why we need to break away from those things. When you go to Luke chapter 8 and verse 14, same scenario, but he phrases it differently. Isn't it interesting? The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, life's riches, and pleasures. And what happens? They do not mature. The other side, they said, you will be unfruitful. This side is saying, friendship with the world causes you to be stagnant. You will strive to be reaching certain heights, but you cannot get there. You will not mature. Because this friendship with the world is choking out these things in our lives. It is causing us to be unfruitful. It is causing us not to mature. And therefore, we need to break this relationship with the world. We need to break this relationship with the world. And how do we deal with that? You know, people can say pleasures, um, says what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Um, oh, it's very difficult for, the, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You know, it's as small. And also, people use these scriptures to think that, you know, being rich is, is a sin, I think. You know, but it is not true. Being rich is not the problem. But the pleasures that we pursue with our wealth. Two. The love or the pursuit of wealth is also a problem. God's people, we are very rich men. But that was not the center of their focus. Everything they did, they did for, for the Lord. And what happens? God will, rich, will richly bless you with every good thing because it is his desire for mankind. So God is not saying that we should be poor as a way of dealing with friendship with the world. No. He's saying we need to deal with the issue of the heart. If you go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. That thing is, comes out properly. And you see. He says, people who want to get rich fall into temptation. People who want to get rich. So it's not get, get the getting rich that is the issue, isn't it? It is the what? Falling into temptation. It is the trap. It is the what? The harmful desires again that are being mentioned that plunge men into ruin and destruction. It is not the wealth. It is not the riches. And when it goes on to say, I think it's verse 10 that says there, yeah, then it continues and say, for the love, for the love of money, not the money, not being rich, no, the love. And what do I see there? We are taking our focus away from God to the things that we are pursuing. We are taking our focus away from God to the things that we are pursuing. And that's what it means to have friendship with the world. And it is very sad that in this day and age, we are on that thin line where we are being asked to keep up with the trends. We are being asked to keep up 
with the new direction. The world is moving, and they seem to be claiming that we Christians are remaining behind. And friends, that is a lie. We are not remaining behind. We are on track. But we are on track if our eyes are fixed on the right thing. We cannot compete with the world. I was reflecting uh, on, 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 on something, like, uh, just a small example, but things keep on changing, right? When we were growing up, putting on shorts was a crime. If they show you in, in shorts around, it would be an issue. Today, putting on shorts is the in thing. When I was growing up, seeing you with a torn shirt or shorn trousers, or you'd be ridiculed around town. Today, wearing torn things is the in thing. Hmm? And they are asking the Christian to do what? To keep up with the world. Friends, tomorrow that is again going to change. How, are we, how many times will we keep on changing with the world? Why don't we stick to what God's word says and focus on that as the direction and the purpose? So, if I am a businessman, what is God saying for my business? How can I better offer this service? Because the higher the quality of service that I offer, the greater the reward. That is my focus. I am not saying how much money can I earn out of it. No. How well can I make this thing to be excellent that it may bring me more money? Yeah. And that, man, that money is not a problem. It's not a problem. And if you get it, and then you can also deal with the pleasures aspect of your life, you will still remain on the same track. Because it says there in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9 that it is a, there are traps that come with that. And that's what Jesus was referring to when he says it's, it's very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It's not because he's rich, but it's because these pleasures take us away from the focus of God. And as I conclude my thoughts, I'm asking myself, so how did Jesus deal with this? How did Jesus break friendship with the world? How did Jesus break friendship with the world? And I'm going to go back to um, James chapter 4 and uh, try to harmonize it with Luke chapter 4. And we, we will see the beauty that there comes in. Um, in, in. In James chapter 4, he says, Verse 7, submit yourselves then to God. That's the first point. Submit yourselves then to God. That's point number one. Then point number two is resist it, the devil. That's point number two. We have to resist it, the devil. That's how we, that's, we're saying breaking friendship with the world. Number one, submit yourself to, to God. Number two, resist it, the devil. It's still there in what? In that verse seven, and he will flee from you. And finally, number three is, verse eight, come near to God, and he will come near to you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Let's see how, how this penned out in Luke chapter 4. I think it's from verse 4. I did not knock that one down. Let me see. The temptation of Jesus. Yes. The temptation of Jesus. Let me, let's just begin from verse 1 and we flow through. And then we will see, you know. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit of the Lord in the desert where he was there for 40 days. He was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. Verse 3. The devil said to him, If you are 
the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. How can you relate that to what we have been dealing with? Hmm? Jesus' desire at that time was for what? Was for food. Jesus' desire at that time was for? For food. Hmm? How does Jesus control this desire? That's one of the aspects that we need to see there. Then Jesus said, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone. I have my desires, yeah? But they should not determine how I live my life. Man does not live by bread alone. Breaking friendship with the world is coming to that realization that my desires do not determine the way I live my life. My desires do not drive what I do in my life. What should, de what should drive my life? What should is not my desires. They are there. They are good. But what does God's word direct me to do? That's how you begin to break friendship with the world. That's how you begin to break friendship with the world. That's the first thing. And that's what, and, 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 and that's what in, in James chapter 4, in verse 7, he's saying, submit yourself to, to God. I have these desires on the inside of me, but I bring them before the Lord. That what? That he may determine my footsteps. It is the Lord that determines. I may make my plans. I may have my goals. I may have my desires. But it is the Lord that determines my footsteps. I forget what it's, where it is in either Proverbs or Psalms, but it is there. So place your desires before the Lord. Not just once, but every day. You know? Every day. It was the habit of Jesus every day. He said, I will not live by my desires alone. I will continually submit myself to the Lord. And then the devil was like, okay, you are, that's how you deal with your desires. Now, let me take you to your pleasures. Yeah? What does it do? In verse 5, the devil led him up to a high place and showed him and in an instant all the kingdoms of this world. And he said, I will give you all. Hmm? He said what? I will give you all their authority and splendor. Hmm? This is beautiful. For it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone that I want. So if you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written... What does it say? Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Hey, it is not the car. It is not the husband. It is not the children. It is not the job. It is not the money. It is worship the Lord your God. says, seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness, and then all these things, they will, they will follow. Breaking friendship with the world is continually seeking first the kingdom. Breaking friendship with the world is realizing that what only the Lord your God is to be worshipped. When things are going well and the business is prospering, come before the Lord, give thanks. Come before the Lord, worship. Come before the Lord, God, what should I do even to get more? 
And I see it in the lives of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And every time they were increased, they gave thanks. And they did not even stop working. They kept on pursuing more and more and more, you know. But not, their focus was not on their increase. Their focus was on the relationship with God. Because the relationship with God brings fruitfulness. I am one of the greatest advocates for believers getting rich and richer and richer because when we are rich, we can be able to counteract the gay bill with something because they are using money. When they are reviewing curriculums, yeah, they are using money to try and influence what is being taught that is ungodly. How much more if Christians also had that money and they could also push the other side? I am very much for that. But people tend to deceive us that we are not supposed to be rich. No, 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 no. But the love for money, the selfish pressures that, we, that come with the, with the money that we, we, we get, that is the problem. That is the thing that we need to constantly deal with if we are to have a fruitful relationship with God. And Jesus also said that. I know those are nice things. Those are pleasures. I know, actually, I think in his heart or in his mind, Jesus is thinking, but I already have these, you know? But it doesn't mean that my life ends there. At the end of it all, despite everything that I have, I ought to worship the Lord my God and serve him only. I cannot worship my boss because I want a promotion. No, I will serve God in the place that he has placed me and I will get the promotion. That is what it means to live a life of separation. When you do everything as unto the Lord, these things will follow you. I don't think Joseph was pursuing those promotions. Even when he met with setbacks, once he continued worshiping God alone. Same thing with Daniel. I don't think he pursued the promotion. Once he continued worshiping the Lord only, these things followed him. I do not know where you are in your business. I don't know where you are at your place of work. But if you purpose to serve the Lord, these things will follow you. And it doesn't matter if your heart is, with, you know, because he's saying with the motives of our hearts, right? The, part, the motive of your heart is to serve God only. And like the popular saying says, you do that, O CDK, and see what happens. God will do his part. God will deliver. So break that friendship with the world. I am not here to please my boss. I am not here to please my boyfriend. I am not here to please my son. I am not, no, 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 no. Everything I am doing for my children, I am doing them because I am being a faithful steward of that that God has entrusted unto me. That's the attitude. That's the mind of someone that is breaking friendship with the world. And therefore, there are certain standards that you will not settle for. May God help us to see that. May God help us to see the way Jesus saw. May God help us to understand what Jesus meant when he says, serve only God. Despite the traps that come with wealth, despite the temptations that come with riches, because we ought to have them, serve the Lord only. Serve the Lord only. And the third thing is the pride issue. He's saying what? Um... Uh, the, th uh, the devil led him to Jerusalem, that's verse 9, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Hmm? What is the devil telling God to do, Jesus to do? Hmm? Show off, you know? Assure us. Hmm? It's you. And that's what pride does to us. Show off, you know? Then what, what surrounds it? Envy, jealousy. You will kill because someone is taking your light. Someone is taking your thunder. You are in constant co confrontation with people, quarrels and fights because you want to stand out. He's saying, no, 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 no. Much as it is written, Jesus answered and he said, what? Do not put the Lord your God to the test. You don't put the Lord your God to the test. And what is he saying there? Resist it, the devil. 
The second one that we looked at in, in Jesus' response was saying, come near to God. Worship, serve him only. And this one here is saying, resist it, the devil. Do not put the Lord your God to a test. The devil is asking for what? For a war. He's asking for a contest. He's asking for saying, no, 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 I don't have time for you. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I'll be somewhere living for my God. I'll be somewhere serving my God. That is the call that God desires for us. That is the call that the Lord is reminding us of this afternoon. The pleasures of this world are short-lived, but the consequences are eternal. There are so many points of reflection that come to mind when it comes to desires and pleasures and pride. Maybe I may not have mentioned the thing exactly the way you want it to be. But I pray that the Lord is stirring up some conviction about things that you may need to deal with. He says in James chapter 4, verse 4, you adulterous people. And I was asking myself, adulterous. What other words can I use for adulterous? And when I checked in the dictionary, I saw words like cheating. Friendship with the world is like cheating God. Another word that caught my attention was two-timing. You are neither hot nor cold. We can't tell where you are. Two-timing. Is it possible to be on the Lord's side? and to be on the other side. He says, though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Though we are of this world, and though we are in it also, we are not of it. And therefore, we ought to, defa- to, to, to live our lives differently we ought to live our lives differently. As though we are not there. There's a portion of scripture that came to my mind right now. Um, yes. Uh, First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. You know? As I'm bringing my thoughts to a conclusion. You know, he's saying, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. We are different. I urge you, as aliens and strangers, to abstain from sinful desires which war against your your soul. And what does he encourage us to do? Live such good lives among the pagans, among the world that you are in. That though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see the life that you are living and glorify the God that you serve. Live a life that preaches the love of God. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Resist the devil. Come near to God. Come near to God. And you will be a friend of God. Things to deal with are many, and um, maybe I can hint on one or two. Um, I think, yeah, as, we, as, I, as I wrap up, maybe let me see Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. I think I'll just focus on that a bit. And we, we, others, I'll allow you to pray and reflect on them as the Lord... Um, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Put to death, therefore, what belongs to the earthly nature. What are those? Sexual immorality, you know, in all its forms. Impurity, in all its forms. Lusts, in all its forms. Evil desires, and they have specified, so we can know that now not all desires are evil. 
and greed, which is idolatry. Put to death those things that hinder us from building a relationship with God. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways before, but now you must rid yourself of those things. And he continues to add on to the list. He says, deal with anger in verse 8. Deal with rage. Deal with malice. Deal with the, the filthy language, the slanderous tongue in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8. And I'm sure if you go on reading down, he will continue to give you a list of things that you can deal with, that you need to break yourself away from in order to become or to continue thriving as a friend of God. So this afternoon, I pray that the Lord will continue to remind us and to revive us as friends of God to deal with areas of our lives that have separated us from him. Separated us from him. So that we will continually and constantly live lives that serve the Lord. Let us pray in this, in this short time. As it says that in every area of your life, may you be constantly found serving the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that this afternoon our hearts are being stirred, our hearts are being opened up to different areas of lives to evil desires that tend to separate us from God. Lord, we come before you today because you said, come nearer to God. So this afternoon we are coming nearer to you that you may help us deal with this. Search our hearts. Cleanse our hearts. May we be renewed, may we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That we may think on things that are godly that we may set our hearts and our eyes on things that are godly, that we may set our eyes and our hearts on things that are above. Lord, we pray that you help us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Help us, cause us to overcome temptation, cause us to resist the devil like Jesus did. In Luke chapter 4, it is by the working of your Holy Spirit. Help us to walk in step with the Holy Spirit like Galatians is telling us in Galatians 5. Walk in step with the Spirit and you will not gratify, you will not satisfy the desires of the sinful nature. We pray that we shall continue to lead lives that are led of God, that are led of the Spirit. I pray that we shall stay focused on God rather than the things that surround us, rather than the things that, 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 that he blesses us with. And every time he blesses us, we will continue to worship him. We will continue to give thanks. We will continue to work at it as though we are working for the Lord. Even every time we get a promotion, we will continue to see the Lord at work in us that we may continue to move from glory to glory. I come and I, re and I bring before you everyone here that may have been stuck at certain levels, may have been stuck, may have faced a stagnation, maybe due to pride, maybe due to pleasure, maybe due to, 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 to desires that have whisked them away from the right path and they are not moving on to maturity, they are not being fruitful, they are being stuck. Lord, we pray for a release this afternoon that they will be able to move on to another level, that they will be able to grow from where they are to another level in their lives. Lord, we need you. We need you to deal with these aspects of our lives, that we may grow, that we may move on to maturity, that we may move on to fruitfulness, that our lives shall be a living testimony of the goodness of the Lord. That our lives shall be a letter written that is visible to those that are around us. Because we are your ambassadors in this earth. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. Lord, help us to live as God's people 
in this generation. So we pray that as we continue with our day and we prepare to do the offering, everything else, that God, may you continue to minister to us, may you continue to nourish us for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.